Okay, so our column chart gives us a good sense of titles by genre. And now let's say we want to explore how those titles are distributed across ratings instead. Now because each pivot chart needs to be tied to its own separate pivot table view, I can't just add rating to the same pivot and adjust which piece of the view our chart is reading from or which column. It's kind of all or nothing. So one entire view is tied to one pivot chart. And that means we have two options here. We can either replace our existing column chart by swapping out genre and pulling rating in and then changing the chart type to a pie or donut. Or we could create a second pivot table view, either on this sheet or somewhere else, so that we don't have to replace what we've already built. Now, I like the second option, so let's go ahead and select a cell in our first pivot, go into our pivot table tools, select the entire pivot table, and with the entire table selected, it's as simple as pressing Control C to copy, and I'll select some blank row down beneath our column chart, and press Control V to paste. Now, remember that when you create a second copy of a pivot table, it will work independently from the first. So that means in this case, I can swap genre out into the filters box, for instance, and drag in rating as my new row labels. And since we're now dealing with multiple pivots on the same sheet, let's go ahead and name this pivot in our pivot table tools, titles by rating. And then we can select our first pivot. And instead of pivot table five or whatever number you're looking at, we can title that one titles by genre. Now it's extremely clear which charts are tied to which pivot tables and what those pivot table views are actually representing. So now here in our second pivot table, let's go ahead and drill down to just the ratings we care about using the manual selections. In this case, just our kind of core four ratings, G, PG, PG13, and R. And press OK. Now I'll just go ahead and sort these descending by the titles. And in terms of sorting, um, typically you'll want to do any sorting that you need to do in the pivot view itself rather than trying to do sorting uh, through the chart interface. So in this case, that's why I wanted to uh, sort them descending by title here so that they'll be visualized in that order through the chart. So now that we've got our simple view that tells one clear story, I'll go into pivot table tools, pivot chart to launch that insert chart dialog. And now instead of the column, which is the default or recommended chart, let's go into our pie options. And we can select donut right here at the end, which is essentially a pie chart with a hole in the middle. So press OK. And boom, there you go. Just drag it down here beneath our column chart. And now we have a pretty clear sense of which ratings contain the most titles. So overall, we see a good chunk of titles, the largest share in this blue segment, um, are R-rated titles, followed by PG-13, PG, and finally a small number of G titles uh, here in the yellow segment. And you might have noticed that since I kept genre in my filter list, instead of dragging it out of the table entirely, this pivot chart reflects that right up here. So now I can adjust the donut chart to reflect any genre or any subset of genres rather than sample as a whole. And I can do this by adjusting the filter either in the pivot chart here or in the pivot table itself. So one and the same. So for example, I can easily see how the distribution of titles looks for horror movies specifically, which are almost entirely R-rated, versus something like adventure films, which are much more heavily skewed towards PG films. And then one thing to call out, if I right click and choose select data, this is where I can tell exactly what pivot table this chart is reading from. In this case, it's the titles by rating pivot table. And I can do the same with our first chart, select data, titles by genre. So it's a good way to kind of keep track of what's tied to what. Now, one word of warning about structuring worksheets like this with multiple pivots stacked on top of each other. This approach is totally fine, but it really works best when you have a relatively small number of fixed structured pivot table views. And the reason is that things get messy pretty quickly when you have a bunch of different tables on the same sheet that are all changing or growing. Um, in fact, you can't have pivots that overlap, which for instance, I can demonstrate by trying to drag something like country 
into our first pivot table, that would create another column that would extend well beyond five or 10 rows and therefore overlap with our second pivot. So I get this error that says pivot table report cannot overlap, press OK. So the point is your best bet is to lock in the specific views that you care about or want to visualize and then try to keep things relatively stable from there. Um, so personally, I prefer to have one version of my pivot that's actually a separate standalone worksheet, which I can then use for manipulating and exploring the data. And then a second sheet like this one with simple preset views that drive my visualizations. So that said, there are a number of different approaches that you can take here. So it's really up to you.